Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll give a, oh, about 40 seconds to let people log into our, our event and then uh, we'll get going. Okay, we'll just get started. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk an important topic, really, uh, teaming strategies to grow your, your business. Uh, one of the things that's important about this topic, a lot of people ask us about teaming or they don't realize that that's just a great way in which to um, get into government contracting. So today's presentation will just kind of cover a lot of the questions you may have in regards to this topic. First, a little bit about who we are. We're the Apex Accelerator. We were formerly called a PTAC, Government Technical Assistance Center. Uh, we're administered uh, locally by the Monterey County Business Council. And the uh, Apex Accelerator program has been around since 1985. It's funded through the Department of Defense. And there's 96 centers in the United States and the U.S. territories. And there's seven within the state of California. I'll show you a map here in a second of of those uh, different areas in California. And the mission of all Apex Accelerators across the country is to promote economic growth and employment opportunities in the local markets that they serve. And we do that by facilitating your access to the government marketplace at the federal, state, as well as the local level. So here's this map that I was talking about, the state of California. So each one of these colored areas is a different Apex Accelerator. We're this teal area in the middle of the state, uh, Central Coast, Central Valley. If you're uh, in this webinar and you're from one of these other colored areas, uh, you can just either contact us or just kind of do a search and uh, work with, with uh, Apex Accelerator that's appropriate to the county where your business is located. A little bit about uh, the services that all the Apex accelerators across the country provide. Basically, it's confidential services working with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in that one-on-one -on -one counsel, we want to learn, you know, what you've done in the past, what are you currently doing, and then kind of your goals for government contracting. Uh, once we kind of go through that, we'll sit down and do some strategizing around pre-award assistance talk to you about how do you find opportunities that are out there in the government marketplace, help you review those opportunity notices that you'll see on government websites, uh, talk to you about putting together a capability statement that's a marketing piece that kind of is requested oftentimes, but it's a great way for you to promote your business to any customer, not just the government customer. And then post-award assistance, you know, if you get a contract, with a customer, it's not uncommon that a conflict will arise. Uh, so we can kind of coach you through that. Talk to you about debriefs, which are really important in uh, you when you've submitted a, an, an offer to the government that you want to basically ask for a debrief. And then talk a little bit about protests, what they are, whether it makes sense for you to uh, go down that path or not. Uh, outreach events. Anytime we hear of outreach events where somebody is hosting an event within our region, sometimes outside of our region, that uh, we feel that there would be value for you attending either to uh, seek out potential customers or uh, additional training, those types of things. We'll push those out to you. Uh, we continue, and oftentimes at these outreach events, we're there and actually doing some live in-person training. But again, of course, we'll still do these virtual webinars. That's a great way to reach a greater audience. Uh, big matching is a service that uh, all Apexes do, and what it is is we work with uh, third-party vendors who have systems that will actually go out and search thousands of uh, websites where government agencies have posted their contracting opportunities. Based upon a profile that we've helped you uh, put together, any matches between your profile and the opportunities that the system finds then are just emailed directly to you. So it's a great way to save you a lot of time, as well as oftentimes uh, identifying opportunities with governments that you maybe never even considered as a potential customer. And then uh, we uh, help you to navigate certification programs. So there's a lot of certification programs out there. I'll actually be doing a presentation in a couple of weeks about certification programs in general. But, um, you know, we'll help you guide you through that, that process. One of the great things with us is that there's no fees or commitment. You know, we're your tax dollars at work, so you can take advantage of us. And um, 
It doesn't cost you a dime. Even though oftentimes you go online or you'll receive emails from people wanting to sell you services like the ones you can get from us at no cost. So take advantage of us and don't use your money wisely with some for some other purpose than paying somebody for the kind of services that you can get from us at, at no cost. With that, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Roger Gilbert. He's with a small business development center with a great strategic partner of ours. So we can tell you a little bit about who they are and what they do. Thank you, Victor. Uh, uh, once again, my name is Roger Gilbert. I'm the director of the Central Coast Small Business Development Center. And we have a similar purpose. What we do is we provide high quality, no cost, one-on-one -on -one advisors uh, to small businesses or small to medium-sized businesses in Monterey and San Benito counties. Um, we will help small businesses, whether you're a startup or an established business with technical support and information to help you either start or grow your business. So if you are interested in that, go to centralcoastsbdc.com. You can get a little bit more information about what we do and you can get started by uh, hitting the button that uh, no surprise says get started and uh, put in your information. Someone will contact you and we, we will see how we might be able to be of help to you. So thanks very much and uh, let us know if we can help. Great. Thank you, Roger. Yes, so these guys are a great resource. Uh, oftentimes, we'll work with someone, they're a brand new startup, and we'll say, hey, go work with the SPDC, kind of develop a business plan that includes government contracting to kind of give you a path of success. Or oftentimes, people will come to us looking for financing, and a great way to start is to work with an SPDC because they know basically all the underwriting requirements of lenders, and they can kind of help counsel you on that topic. So let's jump in on today's presentation on teaming. So I'm, I'm going to go over some, this is the agenda. I'm just going to go over the basics, benefits of teaming, types of teaming arrangements that are out there. An uh, important one that we all often t uh, talk, get asked about is finding teaming partners and then talk, which is really important, selecting a teaming partner and then why finding a part, finding a partner oftentimes fails. So basics, you know, what is teaming? Basically, teaming is just, you know, two companies working together pursuing a contract. And it can have various forms, and I'll get into that. Uh, why team? Well, because, you know, there's money to be made, and oftentimes one company does not have all the skill sets, the resources, the products or services that are required in the contract in order to be awarded the contract. But by but teaming with somebody else in one of the the ways I'm going to be detailed here in a minute um, enables them to take advantage of that. You know, who benefits that by teaming? Everyone benefits. The customer, the government customer benefits from it. Uh, both teaming or the multiple teaming partners all benefit because everybody makes money. So uh, everyone benefits from it. So a little bit more details about benefits. Basically, and this is directed benefits towards, you know, the small business owner. But it, it really, it helps, increases your opportunities. As, as I mentioned, oftentimes you may have not, may not have everything that is required in the contract. So rather than you passing on that contract, you find a teaming partner that uh, has those, say, either skills or product or whatever it is that you might need to meet all those requirements. And then it enables you to uh, have everything it takes to submit an offer. So basically it allows you to participate in a contract. Um, you know, it adds skills that you lack. So again, oftentimes you'll see an opportunity in that opportunity. There might be a lot of different types of services. Uh, your company may specialize in one thing, but uh, you're lacking on something else. So by teaming, you can bring that in. Oftentimes by teaming, you can add resources. So that could be a added equipment, uh, maybe financial assistance, if you're in construction, it could be that due to the size of the contract, uh, you have to bond the contract. You may not have the bonding capacity to um, 
qualify for that contract by teaming with somebody who has a higher bonding capacity, then you meet that bonding requirement. Same thing goes with, with financing. Maybe there might be like a letter of credit that you know that you'll need to establish in order for you to uh, pay suppliers, pay your employees while you're waiting to be paid by the government. Uh, your line of credit might not be adequate enough for you to uh, get you through that period by teaming somebody who has stronger uh, line of credit but able you to do something like that. Uh, it'll help you uh, increase your opportunities by leveraging socioeconomic set-asides. Uh, and I've just got a couple here, but like I say, 8A, service disabled veteran-owned small businesses, women-owned small businesses. Uh, in the state of California, you'll see a lot of opportunities that the state has where there'll be a either a requirement or they'll be encouraging and you'll be evaluated on that by as an example using what they call disabled veteran business enterprise. So again, by uh, teaming with somebody who, who has one of these uh, socioeconomic uh, certifications uh, will enable you to be a little bit more competitive in an offer. Uh, by being open to teaming, it can attract potential mentors. Uh, and that's a whole topic in itself as far as going out and finding mentors, but it, I, that's a great way for you to, you know, develop, uh, your business is having somebody who is more experienced, a little bit larger to mentor you. So, uh, be, being open to that. Um, one thing about, uh, teaming is that oftentimes it might help you to familiarize your firm with the government contracting process. So you may, you know, have a good business, but you've worked in the private sector. Once you get into the government, you'll see that there's different kinds of uh, requirements for paperwork and things like that. So your teaming partner might have that experience. And then that way you learn by working uh, with them on some of those types of things. Again, they may understand, say, example, the... Uh, in the federal marketplace, the solicitation document, basically the request for proposal or the inf informa uh, inf invitation for bid. You know, you may look at it and get kind of confused. We can help you with that, of course, but with a teaming partner, they may already uh, understand that very well and can help guide you through that. And then lastly, which is really important, is it helps to develop additional past performance. When you're going after government contracts, uh, the most important evaluation factor that government uh, buyers look at is your past performance. So if you lack past performance or past performance that is not similar in scope to the work that you're pursuing, oftentimes by teaming with someone uh, allows you to participate in the contract and then enables you to then uh, acquire uh, performance history for projects that you've done. So it's a great way to to uh, pick up past performance that's a requirement. I talked to a client yesterday and that's the case with him. He's looking at a government contract opportunity, but the documentation required him, he provide three references of past performance where he's sold products to service to before and he really just did not have that. So he's gonna have to go out and find it in the, private sector, so then he can apply that to the uh, government sector. So types of teaming, I'm gonna go into each one of these, but you've got your prime, the most common is this, you have a prime contractor and then you have subcontractors, and then you have a joint venture, and then a mentor protege teaming agreement, and then um, uh, just a teaming agreement in general is, uh, you know, what are they and how are they used? Uh, sometimes people get confused with, say, a teaming agreement and, say, a joint formal joint venture agreement. Typically, a teaming agreement is more where you formed a teaming agreement, basically an agreement with another company that says, okay, we've agreed to team together, and so we agree that we're going to pursue contract opportunities in the future together as a team. Should we uh, see an opportunity and should we be awarded contract then we'll formalize it either through a prime subcontractor relationship or a joint venture relationship. 
but the team in agreement just is an agreement that you have agreed we're going to we're going to work together in the future so here's some things uh to consider uh first one is team in a good strategy for you um a lot of people who go into business the reason they go into business is that they want to be the main decision maker uh they don't want to work for somebody else they want to call the shots so it could be that for you teaming is not a good thing to do uh however i can i can say though that uh if you look at a lot of industries and a really good example of this is construction <clears throat> is that uh teaming happens all the time you look at any kind of major project and you'll see that they're billion dollar uh, construction companies that have joint ventured for a specific project. They've agreed on this project. We're going to work together and the project's done. We go our own ways. At the same time, the, you know, they agreed on one project, but they're also performing on several other projects separately on their own as well. But again, if you're someone who just doesn't want to be answering to anybody else, it may not be a good opportunity for you. Uh, this second one, conduct a SWOT analysis. SWOT, if you don't know, stands for strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. So it's a process that's been de developed, you know, decades ago. But what you want to do is you want to do this for both your own company as well as your intentional teaming partner. So you want to be able to uh, look at what strengths does your company have? What weaknesses does your company have? What opportunities are out there? And then what kind of threats pension could be there? Typically, the strengths or weaknesses are things that are within your control. The opportunities and threats are, are things that are out there in the environment that you don't have control over, but may be important to you. Um, and again, it's really important that you do it on yourself, but then you'd like to see that, that your teaming partner has done one as well. And I'll kind of go into that a little bit further in this presentation. You know, uh, this third one is where are you in the supply chain? So one of the things that we always talk about with this concept of supply chain is that depending on your business, and a really good example is construction, is that uh, oftentimes when you look at government uh, projects, the government is typically looking for a general contractor that's going to manage the entire project that they need. That project may need an electrical contractor, a plumbing contractor, a mechanical contractor, a concrete contractor, etc. But those uh electrical plumbers and uh, mechanicals uh, would never directly have that contract with the federal government. They would have to team as a subcontractor, whoever is the prime contractor. So just kind of keep that, keep that in mind. Uh, what uh, you want to consider what kind of form of teaming is appropriate. So again, the easiest thing might just be someone else at the prime and you're the sub, you do your work, you get paid by the prime, et cetera, but you might want to formalize it for various reasons and do like a joint venture or something like that or establish a mentor protege relationship if you really uh, feel that it's going to benefit your company. Uh, the other thing is how much time is available? And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail here when I talk about uh, finding a, a teaming partner, but th that's important. You know, if a contract is due next week, uh, more than likely it's gonna be hard for you to to do that. In some cases as a subcontractor, you know, you may be uh, contacted by a prime contractor to say, hey, you know, the plans for this project that we're looking at here, they're over here, you can access them and then give us an estimate on your scope of work, because uh, we'd like to uh, include you on our uh, project. Uh, and then last one is uh, number six, how will both partners benefit? So again, it's always what's in it for me. So again, uh, everybody wants to make money. So it's, it's, it's like, uh, you want to make sure that uh, 
whoever is whoever are the the members of this teaming partnership etc uh every everyone uh profits for, from it sadly uh i've seen where you know someone will go into a teaming agreement or not a teaming agreement but relationship and they're exploited by the larger uh teaming partner which is not good but it does happen so uh definitely we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute you know so this is a topic that people come to us and it's like can you help me find a teaming partner you know how do i find a teaming partner and the best way to find a teaming partner is basically your personal knowledge of your industry and the players within your industry you know you know who the competitors are you know who are friendly competitors companies that do similar things to you so uh typically you know that's the best place to find a teaming partner somebody that you already know uh it could be that as an example uh you've been a subcontractor to a company but you maybe you want to formalize it into say like a joint venture uh you've already worked with that larger company they know you you know them it went well before that that's personal industry knowledge that you have that you can leverage to make it uh, successful for both uh participants you can go out and do market research and various databases that are out there uh and there's and there's different things you can be looking for you know if you go to like this last one here it says sba's Veteran Small Business Directory. So if, if you see that there's an opportunity and it's set aside for uh, a veteran owned small business, you go to that directory and then maybe try to find somebody who that you could talk to that might have an interest in an opportunity that you have identified. You know, again, what's in it for me? So that veteran may or may not be aware of the opportunity. You say, hey, here's this opportunity. It looks like it's going to be veteran. Set aside, I'd like to talk to you about it at maybe being a subcontractor to you, those types of things. Uh, with uh, USA Spending, <laughs> uh, USA Spending is a website where the government posts all the contracts that they've executed on. And so you can go out there and see uh, which companies were awarded contracts the dollar values of them, those types of things. So you can see who's been getting contracts. So you can maybe by looking at that list, see that, oh, here's somebody I've worked with in the past, or I know that company. So, and I know somebody there. So let me see if I can um, approach them to see about, you know, being a subcontractor, those types of things. The DSBS is the SBA's Dynamic Small Business Search. Uh, Basically, what the DSBS is, is a, a database of small businesses that, as an example, what you could do is you could sort it so that you're only looking at companies, say, in California, that maybe are 8A companies because you see that there's an 8A opportunity and that you're thinking that perhaps you could be like a some type of a teaming partner, a subcontractor or JV partner or something like that with them, but it's a way of which, again, you can uh, identify companies. But these others, uh, associations, uh, conferences, uh, if you don't belong to an association for your type of business, oftentimes that's a great way for you to just meet other business owners who are in the similar business or the same business, learn from them, learn best practices, those types of things, develop some relationships so that eventually you're working together so that... Uh, everybody's making money same thing versus like conferences i mentioned earlier outreach events you know that's a great way for you to go and introduce your company to uh other companies potential teaming partners etc and then the certifications uh you know if you have a certification uh or you see that there's an opportunity that requires one again you can go on some of these databases and then identify companies that have that uh, we had an example uh, a few weeks back where one of our clients was looking at a, a contract with the state. They saw that uh, one of the requirements of the contract was they had a 
sub out a certain percentage of the work to a disabled veteran business enterprise, a DBBE. Uh, they didn't know who to, they didn't know of any that they, off the top of their heads. So we taught them how to go into the state's Cali procure system conduct a search. Once they went in there, they saw a company that they had done work with in the past and boom, just like that, uh, they were able to uh, bring in that DVBE firm and they eventually rewarded the contract. So it was just kind of a great success story. Uh, then again, this last one, just you want to always be out there networking, but as you're networking, you know, just ask your colleagues, your friends, your associates, et cetera, that, hey, I'm looking for someone to team with, you know, you know, I want to be a subcontractor or I'm a prime. Do you know of any subs? So those types of things. And, and a lot of times when you talk about primes and subs, uh, a lot of times people think about it. It's just uh, construction. But if you look at almost any kind of industry, you'll see that that's the way things are done. I mean, a lot of IT contracts, uh, you'll have somebody who is the prime who has that contract directly with, say, the federal government, but they will have a whole bunch of subcontractors that will perform on a specific contract in order to uh, deliver on all the deliverables of the contract. So uh, it works with any any kind of industry. <laughs> so let's jump in here on, on selecting a teaming partner. So, you know, oftentimes people are like, you know, what am I looking for? So, you know, sit down and create a profile of what you're looking for. So again, it could be somebody that, you know, that has more experience with you in the industry. Uh, it could be that they have, uh, again, more financial capacity, those types of things. Uh, maybe somebody that you're hoping can maybe teach you some things. So, sit down and create a profile. Uh, what you want to do though too as well that I highly recommend is develop interview questions. It's just kind of like you're interviewing for somebody for a job. You don't want to just sit down and have a conversation and just start talking. Ideally, you want to have a set of questions because you may talk to five different companies before you'll find one that you really feel comfortable with that you would then want to uh, establish a teaming relationship with. Uh, so some of the things that you may want to talk about in your interview questions is, you know, you want to learn about their past performance, what their strengths, weaknesses are, any kind of relationships they may have with uh, governments, and then uh, any references that maybe that uh, you might want to check on to see whether or not uh, what they're telling you is, is accurate or not. Uh, you want to identify future opportunities. Uh, because again, everybody's thinking, you know, what's in it for me? So if you can come to somebody and say, hey, yes, we know that there's going to be these types of projects coming up uh, right now, like with the amount of spending that's going to happen with uh, the infrastructure money that's come down from the federal government, there's going to be opportunities. So you want to, you know, maybe bring something like that up that uh, they can see that, okay, you know, there's an opportunity here. I never didn't think about that, but yeah, we can make money together. Uh, be willing to share your own strengths, weaknesses, etc. You know, so, uh, you know, you don't want to go and mislead anybody that you're much bigger than you really are and those types of things. Uh, be but willing uh, to share that. And this uh, next one is really important is what you're doing is in this process where you're sitting down, you're meeting with someone, either at their office, your office, or at a restaurant is you want to build rapport and trust with that uh, other company. You know, people like doing business with people that uh, they like. So uh, you want to build that rapport and trust. So it's not something you want to just rush into. So again, develop that rapport. Uh, this last one is really important. Be prepared to exchange financial information. If uh, somebody's not willing to do that, kind of tells you sometimes that they're hiding something because the last thing you want to do is develop a, say a joint venture with a company, you land a contract. And then as you're working on the contract, uh, 
you find out that your teaming partner doesn't have the financial ability to, you know, pay their employees, purchase uh, materials, those types of things. And then all of a sudden you're in a bind. So be prepared not only to, sh to obtain theirs, but share yours as well. Certainly, if you're working with a really large company, uh, when you talk about mentor protege stuff, sometimes, yeah, you know, it's a publicly traded company and you can see their information, but uh, be willing to, again, share your financial information. Uh, so this is important. Why, why finding a partner fails? I know some people have gone and they talk to a lot of people and it never just seems to to be successful in finding a teaming partner. And most of the time it's this, it's just lack of preparation. You know, they haven't sat down and talk, thought about their strengths, weaknesses. They haven't sat down and put together a set of questions that they're going to ask every single uh Teaming, potential teaming partner, those types of things. So you definitely want to prepare. Uh, they haven't done any kind of market research on future opportunities. Again, you, you want to bring something so that somebody sees that, oh, I can see what's in it for me. I've heard about this project that's coming up. They have an interest in it. I have an interest in it. And so they know that, you know, you're out there and you're doing this kind of thing that they do. So it always helps to make sure that ideally, if you can identify a project or a series of projects that you know will be upcoming up, then uh, they'll be more uh, willing to, to work with you. Um, this next one is just a lack of knowledge of where to find teaming partners. So again, people are like, they come to us, they don't know where to find a teaming partner. And it's like, well, Typically, a teaming partner is, is somebody you've already worked with. So, uh, but again, associations, networking, all these kinds of things that I just previously mentioned, uh, that's where you find them. You know, you can ask, you can ask us and we can say, well, yeah, we know some companies that are out there, but, you know, you're going to have to sit down, meet with them, have that conversation, be willing to open up to them, etc. Uh, and then not engaging in expert advice. Uh, and on that, it's kind of like uh, if you've met someone, you kind of like them and you decide, yeah, let's go do, a, say, a joint venture, uh, then people are just kind of jumping into it. They're getting a joint venture agreement off the internet or something like that versus getting an attorney to draw something up that protects you as well as your teaming partner. So uh, make sure that you do that. Uh, another reason it fails is you're not following that process of, you know, identifying opportunities, doing some SWOT analysis, looking at their financials, et cetera. So ha have a process. Uh, and then this next one, not developing personal relationships goes back to building rapport, you know, doing business with people you like. So again, uh, make sure you think about that. Don't go in and it's like, oh, this is strictly business and I don't have to like you. Uh, people like to do business with other people that they like. So make sure that as you're going along, you're developing those personal relationships. One thing about that too is that the people you're talking to too might be that they're working for a company and they may not be the owner per se. They may be a VP or project manager or something, but for one reason or another, they decide they don't want to continue to working with that company. But since you developed that personal relationship, then they might approach you to say, hey, met you. We talked about uh, teaming. Uh, I'd like to come work with you. So keep that in mind. And then this last one, and I've mentioned it in different, different ways in this presentation, is just not identifying the win-win aspect of the relationship again goes back to, you know, what's in it for me. So then uh, this, <laughs> what do you do when things go bad? So, I mean, uh, it does, ha it does happen. Uh, I mentioned at the very beginning about, you know, conflict resolution, those types of things. I mean, it's going to happen. So what you want to do is have a plan in place before entering the agreement. Uh, you may even want to have it written down of, okay, if a if a disagreement happens, this is going to be our process on how we solve that. Um, 
So uh, the other thing is the next one is maintain openness to avoid conflict. Uh, things go wrong. It's out, it's out totally out of our control. So make sure that uh, you maintain openness to avoid conflict. Last thing you want to do is there's a maybe a, a situation that your employees have created that's going to impact the your teaming partner. And rather than bringing that to the attention of your teaming partner, you kind of hide it and they find out about it later. And then, of course, that creates conflict of why didn't you tell me about it? You know, I could have come in to help you resolve that or something like that. So uh, make sure you maintain openness. Uh, understand your role in the teaming arrangement. So, again, whether you're the subcontractor to the prime contractor, uh, I've seen where uh, the subcontractor may be uh, a larger company than the actual prime. You know, a good example of this where it might be like an 8A set aside. And then they're working with a larger company as a subcontractor. And uh, all of a sudden, the larger company starts becoming a bully and telling what the smaller prime should be doing. And it's not a good thing for uh, making for a good working relationship. So uh, make sure that you kind of, again, understand your role in that. Uh, be willing to negotiate. So everything's negotiate negotiable. So be willing to negotiate. I mean, that's the thing is, like I mentioned, things will go sideways. It's nobody's fault, uh, but we, we're willing to negotiate and work around it. And then basically what you want to do is just, it, for nothing else, is you want to finish the contract and learn from experience. So you have a bad experience, learn from that experience, learn why it didn't go well. And then uh, like this last bullet point, if it went so horrible, horribly bad, you know, just don't abandon the idea of teaming with somebody, but just go out and find a teaming partner, do a better job of qualifying a teaming partner before you get into uh, a teaming relationship with a company. Uh, but again, uh, that's what, that's why people form joint ventures. You know, they form a joint venture specific to a project. Uh, if everything goes well, you'd say, yeah, let's go do another one. If it doesn't go well, they just go their separate ways and they'll never do a project again together. But uh, so just, you know, find any team and partner. <laughs> so here's some of the common mistakes that people make in, in this process is that you rush into a teaming relationship. You know, they're so eager to get a contract and stuff. And somebody just offers something and they're like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. You know, and they, and next thing you know it, they've agreed to something that uh, they realized afterwards that they shouldn't have done. So, you know, don't rush into it. Um, you know, like I said, sometimes, sometimes you are contacted by somebody and they've got a week before a bid is due and they'll say, Hey, give us some numbers, but it's your business decision of, you know, how much do you know this company uh, etc. So, and again, if it goes goes wrong, just move on. After, don't ever do another job with them again. Uh, not understanding each other's company's culture. So again, that's really important. You know, it could be that uh, the way you run your company, it's more more rigid. You expect people to show up on time. Things those those kinds of things. The other your teaming partner might be where a little bit more loose and. People show up when they want to and things like that. So uh, that's why the building the rapport and those types of things is important. Uh, in that process, you're you're uh, learning more about their company's culture. So uh, make sure that before you kind of really jump into something that you kind of understand their comp other company's uh, culture. Uh, this next one. Oh, so you're not discussing conflict resolution in advance. So again, you you didn't discuss it, have that discussion ahead of time. When it happens, all of a sudden, everybody's mad and it delays coming up with a resolution. So if you have a process in place ahead of time, it just shows that you're more professional in the real, realization that we understand things happen. You know, no, 
but much as planning as we do, things happen. So ahead of time, this is how we're going to, to resolve it. Uh, the other thing is not reviewing the financials. So I mentioned that earlier. You jump in, you're working with somebody, and all of a sudden you find out halfway through the project that your teaming partner is basically scrambling and, and not being able to make payroll and running out of money. So make sure you do that. Uh, this one comes up uh, oftentimes, this not defining scope of work. So what happens is, is that people go into like this teaming arrangement and in somebody's mind, they're going to do 80% of the work, but the teaming partner thinks that they're going to do, uh, say, 50% of the work. So it creates conflict. So you need a, ahead of time to understand, okay, this partner is going to do these various scopes of work, and then this partner is going to do this various scopes of work. And this is what the estimated dollar value of these things should be. But what you see is someone kind of goes goes into it over like a handshake. Again, they think that they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and they find out that, no, the teaming partner comes back and says, oh, no, you're just going to do Z. We're going to do A through Y and, you know, tough luck. So uh, make sure you define a scope of work that you're going to do. And then not defining, you know, what the payment procedures are going to be. So, again, it could be that, uh, and it happens all the time, where a general contractor will basically try to delay paying the subcontractors as long as they possibly can. And you can go broke waiting to get paid. So uh, make sure you have that detailed and a written agreement of when it is you're going to get paid. Oftentimes, uh, you'll see general contracts, especially in construction, kind of with a clause saying, you know, you'll get paid when we get paid. Uh, you don't want that. You know, you want to get paid on a regular basis. And if they haven't gotten paid by the owner, well, that's their problem and that they need to deal with. But you need to be paid. So summary and conclusion is, again, conduct a SWOT analysis, you know, understand what your strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat, and then also ask your uh, teaming partner for what they see as their strengths, weakness, and the opportunity threats that are out there. Again, identify future opportunities. Everybody wants to know, you know, why, how's that, how am I going to make money from doing this? Uh, Use references first to identify partners. So again, references meaning ideally somebody you've already worked with in the past. And then uh, if you're still kind of struggling, you know, talk to people you know in the industry, people you know and trust. So those are your references if they know somebody. Uh, leverage your set aside if advantageous. So again, if you are certified and say as a woman on business veteran, something like that. Uh, it's a great way for you to kind of leverage that and tell somebody opportunities come all the time for us with these kinds of certifications. Uh, but I know I'm going to need some help in some areas. So leverage that. Uh, and then this is important. Like I said, is important. Use legal advice and drafting your agreements. So again, uh, just don't jump into this. I know you go online and find all these kinds of documents and stuff like that, but you really want somebody to uh, look at uh, agreements, contracts, et cetera, ahead of time. Uh, the cost, if you run into conflict, where then all of a sudden you have to hire an attorney to uh, help you solve a problem, then you might spend, spend a lot more money doing that than if you brought them in, in the beginning and paid them to either draft or, or review contracts that you're signing. And then this last one is just think strategically, don't be in a rush. Uh, one of the things that you'll often hear people say, and we say the same thing is, uh, teaming is, is like when you do, like, like a relationship 
between two individuals. You know, you meet somebody, then you go through a courting process, and then you kind of more formalize it where you're getting engaged and married. That's kind of like what this is too, is that, you know, you want to meet somebody, uh, then through that courting process is where you're, you know, learning about this other company and stuff like that, and then looking for the benefits. But again, don't be, don't be in a rush to do this. You know, you got to think strategically about it. So uh, with that, uh, these are our upcoming uh, webinars, uh, June 27th, Understanding Solicitation. So with that, actually, what it is, is uh, it's more federally focused, and we'll be reviewing uh, the various uh, documents they use for uh, buying products or services that the government has. So there's different forms. They're similar, but different. We can kind of go through go through through those and on July 11th we'll be talking about understanding the, the the various certifications that are out there so there's a lot of them out there uh, and we kind of talk to you a lot about uh, the qualifications that are required to attain them those types of things and uh, with that uh, if you have any questions you can put them either in the Q&A and the chat uh, I will be emailing this uh, presentation to anybody who's in the with a, joining us today, as well as a link to the recording. Should you want to hear it again? I can't stress enough that being a subcontractor to somebody is a great way to for any industry that you're in to uh, get into the government marketplace. Let me go one other, oops. Um, so there's my contact information. If you come up with any questions at a later time and date, just reach out, shoot me an email. Uh, we'll set up a time. We can talk on the phone. And uh, thank you for joining us today. And then we'll see you next time.